I was living in Chicago at the time, and I was looking around at uh, you know universities there, and I found at DePaul University human computer interaction, which is computer science, psychology, and design all in one. Because what human computer interaction is is how people interact with systems. Yeah. Or or a phone or a visual display, or you know everything that is proliferated now. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, when I found this program, I was like, oh my god, that's it. That's, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. And I went, you know, I worked full time and went to school full time and uh, got out and I loved it. And uh, then I started working for this very large technology company and I traveled all over the world and worked for amazing companies and had a lot of really great experiences. So you're someone that I would have worked with. I had to, I had to, I was the liaison between UI development and graphic design and the back end developers. I was the front end developer. I was, I was uh, the guy that had to make the way I used to describe it is I'm the guy that made it like the color blue. You know, I was, <laughs> I was the guy that had to connect those parts, but make it look like it was supposed to. And I used to work with uh, UI development. And that's the funny thing, the interaction that you're talking about. It's literally the same as uh, why people know when there are three dashes at the top that that's where the menu is. It, right, there's nothing right. that says that it's a menu, but somehow it's been that that's been decided. That's what this is. That's it's in, in, in usability in the old Jacob Nielsen terms. It it would be referred to as the user's mental model. Mm -hmm. So you know that's why you know everything you see on the web, people just know, or on their phone, they just know that a hamburger menu means click that if you want to see more of what's on that particular site. Yeah. So it's interesting. I was just talking to um, someone about Jacob Nielsen, who who he and Don Norman were like the fathers of usability, and they developed very very early on. I think in the, I want to say earlier than the 80s, the 10 heuristics of usability. Mm -hmm. which are still very tried and true now. Um, every one of them applies. And uh, it, it's like nothing has changed really other than how they, in the tools that they're applied to. So it, it, we all expect a good experience when we go to a device or a site. You know, if you don't find what you want within two seconds, you're out of there. Mm -hmm. it used to be three seconds. It was four seconds. Now it's like, you know, if you don't find what you want within two seconds, and that's probably a stretch. Yeah. You're out of there. Yeah, or if it takes you more than one click to get there, it's like you're making the person do work to get to the thing you want them to see or yeah. all, all yeah. that kind of thing. Wow, this is this is fascinating. <laughs> I did not expect to geek out with a honey farmer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, my, Mr. Vandahoney is more of the beekeeper. I, uh, you know, I dabble in it with him, but he's like the hands-on. Oh, really? Uh, Operations guy, I like to refer to him as COO, whereas I'm CMO, but it's just a two person, and all the bees, of course. Yeah, well, and and it's funny too. So CMO, you're saying chief marketing, so you're the marketing right, person. Right. So and right. that's funny because going back to what you said about the laws of interaction and UI and all that type of stuff, and it really hasn't changed. Same thing with marketing. It's the same reason that uh, a lot of the times they'll give you the whole Dale Carnegie, you know, how to meet people. I don't even remember the name of it, but I know that everybody promotes that and it's the, like the building blocks and then other people have their different versions, but it comes from the same interactive skills. It's still human nature. It evolves over time, but there's still the basic instinct of what the human nature is, regardless of how it, you know, it, it's evolved over time. It still comes from the same wanting to connect with someone. Like that's the right. important thing is connecting exactly. with people. Connecting with people and, you know, thinking, you made me think of something that, you know, Andy Warhol and pop art, it means point of purchase. I didn't know that. That's where it came from. Yeah. Point of purchase. So, you know, think about it. I mean, point of purchase displays have been around forever. I yeah. mean, you know, forever. Um, there's, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, there's always been point of purchase wherever you've been, not that I was around 500 years ago. Well, maybe I was, I don't know. But <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. You know, I love the history of, of art and technology and, and to see how they've kind of 
evolve together.